Hi, and welcome back to Gage Show Crafts. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah. And today we're going to be talking about our latest beer. Mm -hmm. But first, I want to spend a quick second and give a special shout out to the ladies of the Best Day Ever Crafting Podcast, Trisha and Arthella. Thank you so much for the shout out on one of your recent episodes. We're really big fans of your show as well. And for any of you out there in uh, YouTube land who are looking for a new crafting podcast that focuses on more than just knitting, these ladies sew, they do other kinds of crafts, they talk about um, all different kinds of products that they like, um, which is really nice for those of us that make products. And they also go to a lot of shows, so if you can't travel for your hobbies, maybe you can uh, live vicariously through them. And again, that's on the Tie-Dye Diva channel. And it's called the Best Day Ever Crafting Podcast. So be sure to check them out. Agreed. They called us the Lean Mean Making Team, which I thought was really cute. Uh -huh. <laughs> Made me blush. Thanks, ladies. Appreciate it. Yeah. So we're here today to talk about one of Rick's latest makes. Yes. Our latest beer is a Saison. Uh, we decided to kind of go off of the usual IPA, stouts, porters, etc. And... Mm -hmm. Maybe get ready for spring a little prematurely. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be sampling our uh, fresh out of the keg saison. Yep. And we're hoping it's uh, good and then ready for spring soon. Yeah, exactly. Um, we're recording this uh, on Groundhog Day. Apparently Punxsutawney Phil did not see his shadow this year. So hopefully an early spring is in order. I'd like to get some seedlings in the ground. So. Yeah. Uh, don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Good thing we have Around here, it's end of May, you're planting. Up. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. So as you can see, it's a very light orange to yellow. Mm -hmm. I call that a beautiful golden color. Yeah, really nice. Thanks. It is a bit young. We did just mm -hmm. keg it a couple of days ago. Um, so you can see that we can, we're getting a little bit ahead here, but it hasn't had time to permeate throughout the beer yet. Yeah, so it's a tiny bit undercarbonated, but it's very good. I would say you get a fun that mm. funky characteristic saison nose. Now, did you use a saison yeast for this? I did. I used what's labeled mm -hmm. as a French saison yeast mm -hmm. uh, made by Y yeast, which will be included in the recipe below. Mm -hmm. or the links to the, the details recipe to it, yeah. yeah. And then, wow, all those different fruits. I wouldn't say tropical fruits. I'd say a lot of stone fruit. I'm getting a lot of, like, peach. Mm -hmm. Um... Apricot, um, really nice, yeah. just fruits, and then a very subtle, I would say a nice sweet body to it. Mm -hmm. You can definitely taste the malt in this beer. Yeah, and then, I, and then a kind of a dry, a slightly dry finish, not overpoweringly dry. Yeah, agreed. Well, thank you. Sorry to interrupt there. But no, it's okay. Yeah, the, uh, the sweeter nature of it is due to uh, my mm -hmm. addition of a honey malt. Mm -hmm. um, the recipe that was, the recipes that I were looking at, none of them were mentioning honey malt, but I thought it would really complement the hops we were using as well as the, the style of the yeast and give it a little sweeter backbone to kind of go up against that funk that mm -hmm. you're describing that comes from the Saison yeast. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the, to me, the funkiness is it's 99% on the nose. It's not something I'm really tasting. This doesn't have that, like... Uh, I'm trying to think of a nice word, maybe like mushroom flavor or something that some of these funky beers can have. Yeah. Earthy, um, you know, wet socks is a less um, mm -hmm. uh, nice way to put it, but it doesn't have any of that flavor to it. It's just on the nose for me. Yeah. It's um, a little more bitter than I would liked it. I accidentally mm. added the bittering hops that I expected to put in it to 30 minutes into the boil and Got excited and then I put a minute, 90 minutes to the boil. So mm. it's a little more bitter than I would like, which may be masking some of the other um, kind of the the spring fruits that we mm. were hoping to emphasize from the Huel Malone and the, uh, what was the, the other Bavaria, um, Mandarina Bavaria uh, mm. hops again. Mm -hmm. All of this will be in the show notes and, lick, and click through to the recipe. Yeah. I like that bitterness because mm. I think it offsets it. It's quite, um, we did a, a quick tasting of this the day that Rick Keg did originally because there's always like a little bit left over that you can't quite get out of the bucket or whatever and um, we usually just kind of taste that to make sure yeah it's really it's worth putting the CO2 yeah. to it to make sure you know it's, it tastes good yeah. and it tasted good then um, and I didn't notice any bitterness in that taste for some reason yeah. it's brought out maybe more by the carbonation or just more aging could be 
But mm. that first taste, I was like, ooh, this is really sweet. I even asked Rick, are you sure it fermented all the way? True. And it did. It fermented all the way out to what mm -hmm. we were expecting from the recipe. So I'm actually glad it has a little bit of bitterness to me because it needed a little bit of balance. True. It's, True. You it's were really commenting nice. on how sweet it was still there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's lovely. And I like it. And I'm glad I went with a five gallon. This was originally going to be a three gallon that we were going to put into bottles. Yeah, but tester with, batch. Mm -hmm. Right. But with the IPA uh, kicking just a couple of days before this was ready, we decided mm -hmm. to go ahead and put it in the keg. And um, I'm glad I did. It should be yeah. just getting better every day. I'm glad you went with a five gallon, too, because there's more of it. <laughs> right. And it's easier to get at on, on the taps than it is. Uh, you know, I, I go down in the basement sometimes, and Rick's organized his brewing area and all the bottled beers, and sometimes I don't know what's what, so it's like poking around in boxes. Well, it's not it's easily accessible well. right now because it is behind <laughs> mm -hmm. where I've been setting up to brew, and we do have some things we have mm -hmm. to work our way through uh, responsibly, mm -hmm. uh, including some more of the braggot, and uh, we have some meads. Meads will age through a lot higher alcohol, but that braggot yeah, we should try and get through a little bit. They'll hold the braggot. We should drink the chai braggot. Um, but yeah, back to this beer. So what are our main, our signature ingredients, or what do you feel is like really contributing the most to this? Well, other than the uh, aforementioned honey malt, this mm -hmm. is the first time I've used all German malts. Um, so I used a German mm -hmm. Pilsner malt. I used a uh, sigillated malt and a German pale wheat malt. And the wheat should give it a little more of that lacing and body that you're seeing there as mm -hmm. well. And then we already mentioned all the hops, although actually, no, we didn't mention bittering hop is the Magnum, again. Um, then we used the Huel Malone and the Mandarina Bavaria. Mm -hmm. uh, the, latter, the latter is kind of a relative of the former, and both are kind of known for their strawberry and their melons and their kind of uh, mm -hmm. fruity nature. Yeah, it's a mild fruitiness. It's not the powerful punch of like a citra or something where you're getting that strong orange juice grapefruit kind of experience. This is a much, like I said, it, this in this iteration it did remind me more of like an apricot almost. Yeah. Uh, stone fruit kind of a flavor. Although, I mean, I as I'm sitting here drinking it more, I think more of that strawberry kind of character is also coming out. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is only there are only 20 IBUs uh, in this, so it's not a very bitter thing. It's not high. Uh, it's mostly uh, for the, the aromas. Mm -hmm. that we have most of these hops, and it's you know, 6.4 ABV, so it's a mm. nice little drinkable beer. Mm -hmm. does make me wish it were spring room. Yeah, so a Saison style that originated, I don't know where, did, did it originate in France? Is they Are they accredited with that, I guess? I, I mean, the name would seem to be... Anyway, uh, clearly we didn't do a whole lot of research before this episode, but I think Saison originated Sarah's, in France. Sarah's a good interviewer. She caught me off guard. I was not expecting <laughs> to be able to pontificate on the origins of Saison. And it is a French farmhouse style. I would say it has a very broad flavor profile. In other words, there's a lot of different kinds of flavors that you might find in a Saison. Mm -hmm. Some are very funky. Some are rather sour. Right. Some are pretty mild and mellow. I would put this more towards the mellow side. Right. Um, but it was originally a low alcohol style that you would serve to farm workers. You'd yeah. take this out midday when everybody was, you know, threshing wheat or harvesting whatever they were doing and, uh, and yeah. quaff their thirst. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And most of these also probably originated with just whatever local kind of yeast was in the air and around that mm -hmm. particular farm, which wild. is why we get a little funkier. Yeah, like wild ferment. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and probably whatever ingredients they had just left over or old grains or something. Quite you know, possibly. True, true farmhouse, you know, just kind of a use what you got. Yeah. Brewing method. Especially, if, unfortunately, especially if it was going to be for the farm help and not the house, the main mm -hmm. house probably. But they would still probably be drinking more wine. Yeah, anyway. potentially. It's a lovely style. It's one of my mm -hmm. favorite styles outside of like when I feel like my palate's been a bit wrecked by the big IPAs. I like a good saison or a sour to kind of counter that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like the saison because it brings it can bring a little of that sourness or the funkiness, but it's not overpower. It's not bready. Overpoweringly so, um, it doesn't taste like Whip old sock socks or, or stale bread or or. Uh, or just like lemon juice. I've complained oh, on true. here before that some sour beers, 
are so sour. I just feel like I'm like, drinking, yeah. yeah, a big glass of lemon juice or something. And this is, this is, it's, I wouldn't call this sour. It's definitely a sweet beer, but it has some fruity, yeah, some fruity notes to it. Well, again, I think because of the timing of the bittering hop, mm -hmm. it's a little all over the place, but in a good way. And again, it's still a little young. Yep. We should get a little bit more creamy nature as the CO2 permeates throughout it mm -hmm. and we'll probably lighten it up a little bit as well. Could you? Could you? Overall, yeah. I'm pleased. Yeah, it's delicious. I would definitely say if you are a brewer or you're, you know, um, you're working with an all grain setup, try this recipe because um, I would say it's, it's surprisingly delicious. Not that your beers aren't delicious, but um, I guess the flavor profile was very different than what I was expecting mm -hmm. going in. So when Rick said he was brewing a Saison, you've made a couple of Saisons before, and this yeah. is completely different from anything else you've ever made. Um, yeah, it's again, that's the yeast. I decided I went with something, so apologies. Um, I decided I went something with more on the fruitier side of things rather than the peppers and the spices that you might get from some of those mm. other types of uh, farmhouse okay. style of yeast. Gotcha. Yeah. Because yeah. I know you're not a huge fan of those. I just, I find them to be a bit overwhelming, and I think um, the sometimes Saison yeast can head in the direction of a Belgian yeast, which mm -hmm. has a lot of banana esters and a lot of that kind of thing, and that that is not my favorite um, no, I kind of flavor. It's kind of an overpowering yeast flavor to me. So I like this because it is balanced. You can taste the yeast and what it's contributing, but you can also taste just the malts, and you can taste the fruitiness of the hops, so it's really well balanced. Yeah, and it's got enough uh, bite and body there to really stand up to almost anything you wanted to pair it with as mm -hmm. well, especially like spicy foods and yeah. perhaps the uh, the Mediterranean lamb that we'll be having for dinner this evening. Mm -hmm. I think this would go excellently with that. It's good on its own, but yeah, like you said, it would also be just a great table beer um, yeah. for any kind of a meal because it's, it's not so heavy that it's going to clash with other flavors, mm -hmm. but it is it does have a little bit of that refreshing quality that... Mm -hmm in between bites can cleanse right. your palate yeah almost like a wine at that mm -hmm. point you really have that kind of mm, full mouth feel in this mm -hmm. yeah. i agree I'm pleased. So. great anything else we'll uh we'll share the full recipe as rick mentioned in the link below this video so be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you're either drinking uh if you're not a brewer yourself what you're enjoying these days and uh, if you are a brewer let us know what you're brewing so cheers in there cheers